Hello, good morning all. Doing a quick sound check. Can you guys hear me? Can you all hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Leon. Ah, oh, hello, Howard. How are you doing? All right? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Hi, everyone. Hi, Ross. Hi, Bobby. Maxwell. Hakim. I hope all is well. Uh, just looking at the... Oh, Maxwell says yes, Ross. Yep, no worries. You're right, Bobby. Yep. Okay, brilliant. All right. What I'm going to do is in, in this... Um, I was thinking about this and it was from, um, I think, uh, I can't remember who it was, matter of fact. Over the weekend, they had sent me uh, a message about um, fundamentals. In fact, I don't know who it was, matter of fact, it was uh, it was Derek who sent me something about fundamentals. And I was thinking how I could really kind of um, comprehensively kind of just really break it down. I thought I'd done it before in previous videos, um, but maybe it's just maybe a way um, uh, to kind of do maybe some sort of brain dump on on in this presentation is and try to get it out in maybe the simplest way possible um so uh i just thought i'd try and get this uh this all out and record this video so um if you do have any questions by the way along the way um and it has something specifically to do with what i'm talking about then um you know then chime in or send a message if it's um something that isn't to do with this um maybe just leave it to the end um of the uh of the fundamentals uh and and the risk sentiment um and i'll definitely address those uh, those questions after so uh so yeah um so really this this i'm gonna get i guess i'm gonna get started now but um what it is is as we know what we want to do is always look for trade ideas yeah in 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 anything that you do so you have to kind of know um the environment that we're trading in and most trade ideas if not all trade ideas are geared um around um you know the local and global economy yeah all roads probably lead back to this yeah so local and global economy um central bank monetary policy uh, and interest rates and inflation and government fiscal policy these will be the main um uh, uh, uh sorry one sec so yeah these will be the main um well actually the main thing is actually uh is 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 local global economy yeah that's pretty much it and that is really managed i should say by um central bank policy and interest rates and government fiscal policy yeah so all roads lead to whether we are growing or whether we are you know shrinking going into a a recession that's pretty much it now as we know risk on is pretty much economic growth so when everything is all right in the world yeah and there's growth um in 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 countries whether it's locally or globally or both um then we are in a risk on environment so the focus would really be um on things like inflation so the central bank target is you know two to three percent um inflation year on year um and when you kind of know that we're in a risk on environment is usually when you have um interest rate hikes when um, when inflation is below the target, yeah, the two, three percent, because as we know, central banks really kind of hike, hold or cut interest rates. So the time that they would really be hiking is, for example, if you're and you guys know the economic cycle where you have um, you, know, you have the boom phase, you have. Like, for example, the contraction phase, you have the recession phase. You have the bust or slump phase here. You have the recovery, and then you have uh, expansion, and then it's back to boom again. Yeah. So if the usually when when inflation is is low or below the two three percent target, it's it should be probably around this recession. The, the economic uh, status or standing of a of a, of a country is normally around the recession, maybe bust slump potential recovery phase so as we get closer to this two percent target 
yeah, in the recovery phase normally. Yeah. Um, if it starts, if they start to hike interest rates, then that is a sign of potential, you know, recovery or growth in the expansion phase. So this growth risk on uh, is usually um, uh, uh, synonymous with a growing economy when it comes to rate hikes if inflation is below targets and obviously you know a stable government encouraging economic growth so when all is right in the world that's pretty much what we're seeing now the main thing is what we're in right now is uh, risk off and again just to remind you that risk on and risk off is like a scale it's not um, a light switch so you have varying degrees of risk on and risk off, maybe that being the most extreme, this being maybe, you know, zero, this being, you know, five, and this being five, etc. And it literally risk will slide along the scale depending, you know, on um on on really any of you know these uh risk off scenario and risk off environments. So recessions when it comes to um, uh, the global and local economy, right? If, if we're heading into a recession, then it's usually a risk off scenario. And again, it can be local or global. At the moment with you know, COVID-19 um, and, and the like, um, we are heading into what is known as a global recession meaning that pretty much all major economies in the Western world um, um, or around the world really are heading into a recession. Now, risk off scenarios, yeah? So these are usually the risk on scenarios, yeah? And the risk off scenarios are going to be um, really when you have these type of indicators going on. So inflation below 2%, yeah, is, is, is usually... Um, recession territory or above three percent um and this kind of goes into hyperinflation and deflation and i'm not necessarily going to get into it into that right now but when you start if you start to see in the news the words deflation or you start to see you know hyperinflation or high inflation then you know that it's a you know potential heading into a risk off scenario fear uncertainty and doubt is fud by the way so when you start to read, um, uh, you know, uh, the news and they start talking about a country is below their 2% target. When you start to see and hear central banks uh, talking about interest rate cuts, yeah, um, and that is, again, synonymous with inflation, uh, sorry, <laughs> below, that's what I forgot the E, um, inflation below targets, yeah, their 2% target. Yeah, if it's below, then central banks usually are in the cutting uh, cycle of the interest rate cycle. You have quantitative easing when you pretty much have no bullets left. And when I say no bullets, I mean when you have no um, interest rates to cut, normally what they do is they go into um, negative interest rates, like for example, where Swiss, the Swiss um, National Bank are and the, 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 the Bank of Japan are, and then obviously with Europe as well, um, going into minus um, potentially and obviously QE and central bank intervention. When you start seeing these types of things, that is usually terrible for an economy. Yeah, not only for the currency, it's terrible for the economy because a, a country's currency's strength is determined by how well the economy is doing uncertainty right fear uncertainty and doubt elections coalitions yeah whereas when you have a stable government yeah that is encouraging economic growth and their policies yeah are uh, are, are are growing the, the the economy that's brilliant that's 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 risk on when you have you know elections uncertainty a change of government potentially which may not be favorable to uh, to businesses they might for example you know hike taxes and and have to cut public spending for example that's not um uh, great for 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 economic growth yeah um it's more defensive 
rather than being you know offensive as far as uh, promoting growth and, and as well policy government policy mis mismanagement you might have a government pol government policies may just you know end up ruining the the economy um a country's debt and all countries are pretty I hate all countries but uh, a lot of the major currencies are in um, countries are in debt and you may have heard and how many of you have, have, have been you know uh, looking at for example the US debt right which is pretty much running into the trillions now every pretty much every year you get you know a, a bigger uh, a deficit when it comes to you know uh, US debt anyway and and a lot of countries debts um, but why hasn't the sky fallen yet why hasn't um, uh, uh, you know the, the country uh, collapsed as a lot of um, conspiracy theorists keep saying every single year you know the end of the US empire etc etc I'm not saying it's not going to happen but the reason why is because regardless of how um, bad the US are and how deep in debt they are is they still have the ability to pay off their debts now when the cracks start to appear where potentially they may not be able to pay off the two trillion or where whatever it is however many trillions it is in debt they are that's when that will start to come into play yeah but for now massive debt doesn't necessarily mean it means you know it's, it's quite bad but it you know it's not the end of the world if their ability to pay off the debt is is still there Commodity supply and demand. Now, there are certain countries that are driven by commodity um, uh, currencies, uh, uh, by commodity prices, sorry. As we know, commodity currencies like the Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, um, and the New Zealand dollar as well are commodity currencies because their main exports are, you know, things like uh, copper, um, iron ore, uh, uh, oil, um, and, uh, and dairy products, for example. So the price of a uh, commodity is directly uh, linked or usually linked, high correlated to uh, the currency's value as well, right? So supply and demand is what really drives a commodity's prices and um, and uh, that would have an effect potentially on, again, all roads leading back to the local economy, yeah? Natural disasters, again, potential recessions, war, potential recessions. And then we have, um, really uh, uh scenarios that kind of come out of nowhere when i say come out of nowhere but that are kind of not necessarily historical until they actually come so for example brexit brexit um is 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 a fairly new um risk off event simply because of the situation with regards to the european union and the uk and the uk pretty much divorcing uh, uh, Europe and trying to go it alone, right? So Brexit wasn't a problem. You know, wars have always been around, for example. Natural disasters have always been around. Commodity supply and demand problems have pretty much always been around. Brexit, you know, pretty much just started 2015, 2016. Uh, COVID-19, again, this global pandemic is something that is, I wouldn't say necessarily new in a sense, because, you know, we understand that there was, for example, the Spanish flu Back in, I think, the 19s, in 1919, 1920, for example. So it's not necessarily a new thing, but in 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 modern in this modern era, yeah, and the way that you know the, the world now is a smaller place because of you know air travel, um, the internet, etc. Um, COVID-19 and the coronavirus is something that is quite um, quite new in that sense, um, in the way that we're dealing with it. Um, and again, something that happened, for example, the housing bubble, the housing crash, again, we had never seen anything really quite like it when it happened in 07, 08. So that was something that was a, a risk off um, scenario, but really, and it was quite niche in that sense that it hadn't, it wasn't something that had happened, you know, 20 years before, 30 years before, and it was a repeat of something of that. It was, it was something fairly new because of, you know, credit, um, the credit had dried up as a result of that derivative swaps and all that kind of stuff so this is from what I can think of anyway I'm sure there's going to be some down the road maybe some that I've forgotten um, or I don't know about but what we're looking to do when it comes to understanding 
our environment is understanding whereabouts on this scale, yeah, we are overall. Yeah, if you read the news or you see in the headlines, how many boxes are being ticked on, you know, from the growth phase to the recession phase? And if you can tick more boxes on this side, even though they have probably more boxes, obviously they have more boxes to tick, but you know, if this is what is in focus or any one of these or two or three or five or 10 of these are in focus in the news and you're seeing it pretty much every day, then this is where we are from a trade idea perspective, yeah, in the environment and whether the economy is in the growth phase or the recession phase. Um, so, or heading into a recession phase. Does anyone have any questions, by the way, um, so far? If I missed anything, or is there anything you're not clear about? Everything all right? Is my mic working? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, all right. Uh, yeah, all good, all good. Okay. Yes, all right. All clear, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, no worries, thanks, mate. Um, so when we're looking to, like I said, uh, look for trade ideas, if we know what environment we're in, then I guess the next question comes is, well, you know, how does that affect, you know, uh, certain prices and certain asset classes? So, you know, price increase or decrease, because that's, that's the main question, isn't it? The main question is, is that, okay, so we know we're in a risk off environment, What's going to happen to you know the price of gold or the price of the, or the stock market or you know or oil etc. So if what I'm saying resonates with you, why not check out trading180.com? There is a selection process to trade my supply and demand zone for X strategy. I'm only looking to work with uh, individuals with the right mindset, you know, who are hard working as well. So um, check that out. And access really for less than one pound a day. This some of the strategies in here are not for beginners. So if you don't know what supply and demand is, please check out all of my supply and demand videos. I have hundreds of videos on YouTube, so you can check that out first. Um, guys, take care, and until the next video, have a good one.